Thank you. Uh, the next item of business, the final item of business, is a member's business debate on motion 7829 in the name of Claire Adamson on Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Those members who wish to speak in the debate, please press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Claire Adamson, Adamson to open the debate. Ms Adamson, seven minutes or thereabouts, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the members in the chamber tonight who will be contributing to what I believe is the first members debate on pancreatic car cancer awareness and also to thank those who supported the most in securing the debate this evening. I'd also like to welcome to the gallery um, the visitors this evening, ambassadors for pancreatic cancer UK and the family members and friends and indeed sufferers of pancreatic cancer. This is the start of a month of activities to raise awareness of this cancer. Presiding officer, I am by no means an expert in this area. However, over the past three years, I have been very privileged to meet pancreatic cancer ambassadors, families and sufferers, and the many professionals who dedicate their lives to support treatment and research into this disease. I'd like to thank my parliamentary assistant, Nicola McManus, who first uh, sparked my interest and informed me about this disease. Nicola's mother, Cathy's journey through this disease is all too familiar and heartbreaking. Having had her symptoms mistaken for many less serious conditions, it was a referral to a diabetic consultant which first raised the possibility about pancreatic cancer. Nicola's mum was already at stage four of the disease and died only a few short months later. I would also like to mention the family of William Begley of Schott, who also died very shortly after diagnosis in the late stages of the disease. Mr. Begley's family have been very keen that their fathers and their own experience of the journey through pancreatic cancer has learning points and improvements at all levels of the care. They have worked very constructively and respectfully to have their concerns raised. And although I did not know Mr. Begley, um, having met his daughters, I think they are living proof that he was an exceptional father and role model, and indeed, in their words, a fair man. Presiding officer, I'm sure everyone here will have been touched in some way by this very cruel and unforgiving cancer. The theme of this year's motion a, a campaign from Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Once is demand better for patients and for survival. This is so important because we know that the survival rates are one of the poorest for any cancer. There is no early detection or screening available for pancreatic cancer, although we do know that early detection may be available as research is being done in this area currently. So it's worth mentioning the most common symptoms this evening uh, and to air those, um, it's really important that people understand that symptoms such as stomach and backache, unexplained weight loss, indigestion, changes to bowel habits, including floating feces. Other symptoms include loss of appetite, jaundice, yellowing of the skin or itchy skin, feeling and being sick, difficulty swallowing, and recently diagnosed diabetes may all indicate the possibility of pancreatic cancer. And it's very important that people suffering any of these symptoms should seek the advice of their GP. I mentioned that research for early detection is underway, but I also want to highlight some of the world leading work being done in Scotland today with the support of Cancer Research UK. Cancer Research UK have identified pancreatic cancer as one of their four priorities because of its unmet need and its poor survival rates and the limited improvement in outcomes in the last decade. So they have invested £10 million in the Precision Pank project. This is a project being led by Professor Andrew Bankin at Cancer Research UK's Beetson Institute in Glasgow. Precision Pank aims to speed up recruitment and enrolment of pancreatic cancer patients into clinical trials that are right for the individual patient. The researchers will use the genetic profile of each individual cancer to offer patients and their doctor a menu of trials that might benefit them. The three trials that are currently planned as part of the Precision Pank will be led by the uh, 
Cancer, um, Cancer Research UK Clinical Trials Unit at the Beetson West of Scotland Cancer Centre. It will recruit a total of 650 patients in centres across the UK and patients will also be helped onto suitable clinical trials that are ready, up and running. The presiding officer, this is all about raising awareness of this cancer. And this is so important because we know that in 2015, 812 people in Scotland were diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and 749 of them are dead from that disease. It has the worst five-year survival rate of the 20 most common cancers at less than 7% across the UK and that this figure has hardly changed in the last 40 years. Unless action is taken now, pancreatic cancer is set to become the fourth biggest cancer killer in the UK by 2026. So I'm very pleased that the Scottish Government has committed to funding the Pank, Precision Pank Initiative and to, to support the University of Glasgow, which aims to personalise the treatment for pancreatic cancer, speed up the scientific discovery and improve survival rates. Nonetheless, this is just the start of what is needed. Pancreatic cancer has only attracted 1.9 of the UK's research funding. And this is something that many of the people in the gallery tonight want to see change, both by their fundraising um, activities, but also by a recognition of how important this cancer is. So this month, colleagues across the chamber and everyone can do their bit to highlight pancreatic cancer. We want to light up Scotland in purple. We want our towns to highlight, the, um, uh, highlight buildings and historic buildings by um, lighting them up in purple, especially around the 16th of November, which is World Pancreatic Day, and Pancreatic Cancer Day. And I also want friends and colleagues to consider coming along at the end of the month on the 29th to the parliamentary event for Pancreatic Cancer UK. Well, they too will be able to meet many of the clinicians involved and the researchers involved in trying to improve the outcomes for this disease. And so I ask everyone to wear purple, tell people why you're wearing purple and talk about this disease and the symptoms because it's only been being open and talking with one another that we care for one another and ensure that we begin to tackle this disease. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Ms. Adamson. Uh, open debate, speeches of four minutes or thereabouts, please. I call Miles Briggs, who followed by Marie Todd. Mr. Briggs, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'd like to start by congratulating Claire Adamson on securing this important debate this evening. And as a co-convener of our Parliament's cross-party group on cancer, I'm very pleased we are having this debate during Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. And, and as the member has said, it's great to see so many members in purple. The fact our parliamentary tie is purple also makes it a great opportunity for all of the gentlemen in this parliament to actually spend the next month highlighting the, the concerns. And I look forward to lots of purple being displayed on local landmarks and across social media as we aim to increase knowledge and understanding of pancreatic cancer. I agree strongly with what Claire Adamson has said about the critical importance of raising awareness of pancreatic cancer as, as we focus on early diagnosis, which can improve a patient's chances of survival and therefore make much needed progress in improving the current very low survival rates, which have remained at around the same level now for the past four decades. It is a massive concern that 80% of people with pancreatic cancer are not diagnosed until the cancer is actually an advanced stage. And those who are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer are nearly six times less likely to live for five years than people with most other types of cancer in Scotland today. I'm very pleased that in 2017, we see the potential step change in the future treatment of pancreatic cancer following the biggest ever UK research investment by Cancer Research UK into the disease. Some 10 million pounds has already been mentioned. As Claire Adamson said, Precision Pank is an ambitious program of research that seeks to uncover the molecular, molecular profile of individual patients with pancreatic cancer, learn more about the disease and pave the way for patients entering clinical trials in a way that matches their tumor biology to the type of treatment. 
This world-leading research is being led by Professor Andrew Byakin and his team at Edinburgh, uh, uh, sorry, that's not an Edinburgh member, uh, team at Glasgow University. And I know all of us wish them great success in that. With some experts now warning that pancreatic cancer could become one of the UK's four, top four cancer killers by 2026, the outcome of Precision Pank is of huge importance to all of us across the United Kingdom as well. And Claire Adamson's motion, motion rightly commends the role of pancreatic cancer charities, and I join her in praising all of them and the role they play. Pancreatic Cancer UK is actively involved in our cancer CPG and does excellent work in raising the profile of issues around these, this disease. And I want to pay particular tribute to two stakeholders involved in Pancreatic Cancer UK, Linda Murray and Kim Rowan, who attend the CPG and have a direct experience of the impact of pancreatic cancer on their families, members and friends. In preparing for today's debate, they highlighted the struggles of family members who have lost loved ones to the disease. Linda incredibly bravely produced a report on her late father, William Begley's journey through pancreatic cancer. And I was pleased to be able to forward a copy of this to the Cabinet Secretary for Health and have some follow-up questions to try to suggest recommendations and improvements for care in Scotland. And families and friends of those who have lost, pancreatic can lost loved ones to pancreatic cancer are very clear that there are significant improvements required to improve the current treatment of those with the cancer in Scotland. Specifically, they would like to see the Scottish Government take a lead in developing a multidisciplinary diagnostic centre approach for pancreatic cancer, consider targets for survival rates for less survivable cancers such as pancreatic cancer, and be ready to copy the fast-track surgery model, which is currently being piloted south of the border, if the evidence points to this actually being successful. They also want to see an end to delays of receiving MRI scans, and the reduction in waiting times for chemotherapy treatment for patients with suspected and diagnosed pancreatic cancer. And I'd be grateful in summing up and closing this debate if the Minister would give comments on where the Scottish Government currently at with these individual specific matters. In conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, I very much welcome today's debate and the opportunity for this Parliament to, for the first time, focus on pancreatic cancer. I hope this debate and Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month will help get more people in communities right across our country talking about the disease and its potential symptoms and early diagnosis. There's much progress that needs to be made in the years ahead, and I hope MSPs from across the chamber will continue to speak about this and keep pressure on this Scottish Government to help improve early detection, diagnosis and treatment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Briggs. I call Marie Todd to be followed by Tom Mason. Ms Todd, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you to Claire Adamson for bringing this important topic to the Chamber tonight. I'm pleased to make a contribution to this debate, and I'm hopeful that together we will help to raise awareness of this disease. Pancreatic cancer charities have been working tirelessly to make their campaign demand better for patients for survival known throughout the UK. The colour purple is integral to spreading knowledge and awareness of the cancer. I did hope to wear a purple jacket today, but I had a laundry crisis. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> Charities are using the phrase turn it purple to encourage people to get involved in the awareness campaign. And last year we saw the Kelpies turn purple in November, along with many other landmarks as part of the campaign. Now, over the last 40 years, improvements in prevention, detection and treatment have revolutionised cancer medicine and survival has doubled. But progress, as we've heard, has not advanced equally for all forms of the disease. Pancreatic cancer hasn't seen much improvement at all. And the five-year survival rates are frankly dire at just over 3% in Scotland. This is the worst survival outcome for any of the 21 most common cancers. And it hasn't improved in almost 50 years. The biggest problem is the fact that 80% of the people who are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer are diagnosed at an advanced stage when it's too late for surgery, which is currently the only potential cure. Most patients die within three to six months following diagnosis. And I'm very grateful to Cancer Research UK for their pioneering project Precision Pank, which aims to speed up the recruitment and enrolment of pancreatic cancer as, uh, in patients to clinical trials, as we've heard. And those trials will be right for the individual patient, and, and they are also um, tripling their investment in research. I really hope their efforts pay dividends. This isn't a rare disease. 
Pancreatic cancer is currently the fifth biggest cancer killer in the UK. And as we've heard from Miles Briggs, if trends continue, it's set to overtake breast cancer as the fourth most common cancer killer by 2030. And that's partly because survival rates are improving for everything else. There's currently no screening or early detection tests for pancreatic cancer, although some are in development. And as with all cancer, early detection improves outcomes. Now, most of us don't even know where our pancreas is. It's right here, tucked in about your liver and stomach. There's also research evidence that we can't recognise the symptoms of this disease. So like Claire, I'm going to go over them. The first noticeable symptoms of pancreatic cancer are often pain in the back or stomach area, which might come and go at first. It's often worse when you lie down or after you've eaten. Unexpected weight loss and jaundice. The most obvious sign of jaundice is yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes, but it also turns your urine dark yellow or orange and your stools go pale colored. There have been some risk factors identified and some of them, like your genes, there's not much you can do to change. But about one in three cases of pancreatic cancer is associated with using cigarettes, cigars, or chewing tobacco. Now, as ever, I feel obliged to encourage anyone out there who is still smoking to try and stop. And keep on trying until you do stop. It is the single most effective thing you can do to improve your health. Now, I too was contacted by Linda Murray and Kim Rowan. They did a great job and they asked me to participate in this debate in order to raise awareness and in the general population, in the medical community and amongst decision makers. Linda in particular wrote very movingly about her dad's experience of care and his journey through pancreatic cancer. I've also had a close friend affected. I hope that I have done the issue justice for you all and I hope that our efforts will continue to, um, to lead to an improvement in research, detection and care in future. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Tom Mason to be followed by Colin Smith. Mr Mason, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm profoundly grateful to Claire and Adamson for bringing this motion forward today. Too many families in Scotland are affected by cancer. Too many lives are turned upside down. Too many people suffering pain and loss. No doubt all of us in this parliament know people affected in some way. I've had my own personal experience with this, this as well, having been successfully treated for prostate cancer, a journey which was not pleasant. And I know that pancreatic cancer is even worse. Unfortunately, however, due to the lack of symptoms until late stage and the difficulties in de detection and diagnosis, pancreatic remains among the most aggressive types of cancer and one of the most difficult to treat. Mortality rates remain among the worst, with five-year survival in the low single digits. And the World, cancer Pan World Pancreatic Cancer Coalition estimates that by 2020, we will see 418,000 new diagnoses worldwide. It is clear we must do more. Members across the chamber will be familiar with the many different statistics that illustrate the extent of the task ahead. We've had many of them said, outlined already. So instead of going through these each individually, I want to talk about the more human side of this problem. I want to pay tribute to the pancreatic cancer survivors, of which there are unfortunately very few, who have battled so courageously in the face of overwhelming odds and the families that support them in the worst circumstances imaginable. I want to do whatever I can to reassure those with a recent diagnosis that we will never stop trying to find new ways to improve palliative care and ultimately a cure. Our scientific community in Scotland and around the world will continue their work and we must support them. Research being done in Glasgow University is a great example of this and I of course wish them well and I hope for early success. But the task of treating this cancer is not one that can be accomplished by science alone. The public, as we heard, have a vital role to play as well. This is precisely why events like Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month are so important. Increased awareness can have a direct and tangible impact on detecting the disease for earlier than we are doing it today. It can mean the difference between life and death. In this respect, I am pleased to play tribute to the Demand Better campaign. 
It is no small achievement to bring together more than 60 organisations across six continents in pursuit of this common goal. It is imperative that the campaigns like this continue to grow in the years ahead. I would support any efforts we make in this Parliament to help. We need to encourage everyone we can, not just to be aware of what the symptoms are, but to seek medical assessment whatever they, whenever they appear, even if they seem trivial. Presiding officer, we must be resilient, stand alongside patriotic ca cancer sufferers and their families. We must recognise that if we want to lessen the impact of, of the disease has on our society in the years to come, the earliest possible detection is vitally important. And it begins with us, presiding officer, it begins with us talking about it, sharing the experience of those who have been affected, and hope that in future days we can diagnose and, and successfully treat the disease before, before it's simply too late. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mason. I call Colin Smith to be followed by John Scott. Mr. Smith, please. Thank you, President Officer. And can I also echo the thanks of others to, to Claire Adamson for her motion, which has provided MSPs with this opportunity to, to help raise awareness of pancreatic cancer. I'd also like to, to welcome our visitors to the, the, the public gallery and to congratulate all charities and their supporters for the, the, the fantastic work they do during Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, World Pancreatic Cancer Day, but also all year round. Each year, campaigns such as Turn It Purple do crucial work to raise awareness and stimulate discussion about pancreatic cancer. This year's World Pancreatic Cancer Day is on November the 16th, and its theme, as Claire Armstrong said, Demand Better for Patients for Survival, provides an opportunity to raise awareness and discuss the key issues surrounding pancreatic cancer and its impact across the world. With more than 60 member organisations from 27 different countries, the World Pancreatic Cancer Coalition and its members' organisations are doing some outstanding work both in specific countries, but also on an international scale. This work is vital to the lives of so many. Every day, more than 1,000 people worldwide are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and around 985 people die from it each day. The picture in Scotland is equally worrying. In 2015, 812 people in Scotland were diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and 749 people died as a result of it. The number of incidents of pancreatic cancer increased significantly between 2005 and 2015, rising by 11.9%. The lifetime risk of developing pancreatic cancer is now 1 in 80 for men and 1 in 83 for women. Before today's debate, I contacted a constituent of mine, Tom Pitcairn, from Ringford in Galloway. Tom sadly lost his wife, Isabel, last year to what he described as this insidious disease. But since then, he's been determined to raise awareness in memory of Isabel, as well as raise badly needed funds for the charities carrying out the important work I and others have mentioned during today's debate. Tom's already raised thousands of pounds for Pancreatic Cancer Scotland, and he urged me to use today's debate to encourage as many people as possible to fundraise for PCS and other charities to help find ways to detect this appalling condition as early as possible. Tom pointed out to me that in Scotland, pancreatic cancer remains one of the least survivable cancers with a relative five-year survival rate of less than 4%. He stressed that early diagnosis and treatment is the key to improving these mortality rates. There's therefore an urgent need to raise awareness about pancreatic cancer and its symptoms. However, symptoms are often late recurring and non-specific, so we cannot rely just on raising awareness to improve detection. As the motion notes, there are currently no screening or early detection tests for pancreatic, pancreatic cancer, and I'd like to voice my support for the ongoing work being done to develop such a test. There's valuable research taking place looking into how biomarkers and scans may be used in the screening process, and it's vital that this work receives the support and funds it needs. As is all too often the case, pancreatic cancer disproportionately affects the worse off in our societies. Both prevalence and mortality are correlated with deprivation, with someone in the most deprived area being 31% more likely than someone from the least deprived area to suffer from pancreatic cancer and 32% more likely to die from it. So it's vital that we gain a better understanding of the risk factors contributing to this cancer in order to take a holistic approach to reducing incidence and mortality. Smoking has been identified as a potential cause of pancreatic cancer, and factors such as age, weight, and family history are all thought to contribute. However, there remains a great deal more to be done in this regard, and indeed a recent ICD report on cancer in Scotland stated that the causes of pancreatic cancer are still poorly understood. 
Getting to grips with the causes and risk factors underpinning this cancer will not only help identify those high at risk, but will better allow us to take a more preventative approach and work to address the underlying causes of pancreatic cancer. In the meantime, I hope today's debate and the work of people like Tom, those in our gallery and our invaluable cancer charities has played a small part in raising awareness of this condition, which sadly impacts on far too many of our constituents. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call John Scott, last speaker in the open debate. Mr Scott, please. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and thank you for allowing me to speak in this debate today to mark World Pancreatic Cancer Day on the 16th of November and Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. And I, can I congratulate uh, Claire Adamson on securing this debate today. Presiding Officer, I have a particular interest in this disease as my late wife Charity died of pancreatic cancer on the 29th of December 2000, aged 49. Some longer serving members may remember her and she was a classic victim of pancreatic cancer as she died following an exploratory operation without recovering consciousness and not knowing she had this dreadful disease. Then, as now, there was no screening or early detection test. Notwithstanding her pronounced jaundice, her GP never considered that this classic symptom might point to her having this disease. So even if she had survived this operation, she would have died within three months, as her cancer was so advanced by the time she got to the operating theater. So today, I'm taking part in this debate in part as a heartfelt tribute to her memory, but also to support the campaign to raise awareness of this disease. It is simply not acceptable that pancreatic cancer is said to become the fourth biggest cancer killer in the UK by 2026. Yet currently, pancreatic cancer research only attracts 1.9% of UK cancer research spending, as others have said. It is simply not acceptable that of the 812 people diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in Scotland in 2015, 749 of them died that year. It is not acceptable that only 7% of those diagnosed survive longer than five years. So I too welcome today the Scottish Government's funding of the Precision Pank Initiative based at Glasgow University and the Beetson which aims to personalise treatment for pancreatic cancer, speed up scientific discovery and improve survival rates. And I wish these researchers every success. So I fully support more research into pancreatic cancer. I fully support the good work of Cancer Research UK in their fundraising to tackle all cancers so that in the future, as few families as possible, do not lose their loved ones to pancreatic cancer and other cancers. Presiding officer, wish me luck as I go for my own pancreatic MRI scan on the 16th of November. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Scott. And that was tough to do, but uh, I do recall your wife in those circumstances as one of the early members of parliament. I now call on uh, the minister, Eileen Campbell, to wind up seven minutes or thereabouts, please. Thank you, President Officer, and it gives me great pleasure to close tonight's debate, and I want to thank Claire Adamson for securing it and for articulating very emotively her reasons for doing what she can to raise awareness of this incredibly cruel condition, and as the campaign states, to demand better. Uh, but I'd like to pay special tribute to John uh, Scott there, who was very brave to pay tribute to his late wife. It's not easy to do, and I think sometimes, presiding officer, these debates that are often missed by the press um, often are when you hear uh, members speak the most powerfully and the most movingly. And again, just pay tribute to John for uh, contributing to this debate. It's very difficult to follow him because I think everyone's been touched by how he made his case. I'd also like to wish him well for his own uh, test that's about to come up. I'd also like to welcome all from Pancreatic Cancer uh, UK to the Chamber and to all who have the condition or who have a loved one impacted. Your presence is incredibly important. So too your stories, your awareness raising and all the work that you do and effort you put in uh, to making sure that people know about this uh, condition. 
I'd also like to pay tribute to uh, Nicola's mum and William Begley uh, and to, uh, to ensure that their experience can go on to generate the improvements that we need to see happen across the country. The Scottish Government recognises the damaging impact of all cancers, including pancreatic cancer, on individuals, their families and their friends. However, we should recognise that there has been some progress over the last past 10 years. The overall age-adjusted cancer mortality rate in Scotland has reduced by 11%, a significant improvement thanks to the efforts of people across the NHS and the third sector. I want to pay tribute and thank sincerely all of those people who work tirelessly across the country delivering our health and social care services and those who raise awareness of such terrible diseases such as pancreatic cancer. But we absolutely recognise that there are a small number of cancers, including pancreatic cancer, where survival rates remain stubbornly low, in part, as members have said, because of late detection. And despite all of our efforts and improvements that we have seen, the UK and Scotland is still behind some other uh, countries in terms of cancer survival rates for a number of tumour types. And in particular for tonight's debate in pancreatic cancer, we still need to bring about much needed improvement. In March 2016, the Scottish Government unveiled its Beating Cancer Ambition and Action Strategy, which serves as a blueprint for the future of cancer services in Scotland. The Scottish Government is acutely aware that early detection of all cancers, including pancreatic cancer, is crucial. The earlier that cancer can be diagnosed, the better the chance of a positive outcome. The cancer strategy will deliver 100 million of investment over the coming years to improve the prevention, the detection, the diagnosis, treatment and aftercare for all those affected by cancer. Supporting these ambitions is our 41 million Detect Cancer Early programme, which over the past five years has increased diagnostic capacity across Scotland, as well as working to increase awareness of the signs and symptoms of cancer. Next year, the programme will focus on the overall benefits of early detection for all cancers and aims to encourage anyone with any concerns or changes to, visit, uh, to their body to visit their GP. And I will certainly instruct my officials to meet with colleagues from the pancreatic cancer charities to discuss how we can support awareness messages through our WC strategy and social media and digital channels and any other channels that are uh, appropriate. And of course, we'd extend that also if uh, uh, Ms Adamson would like to, to uh, be part of that meeting as well. Another area of work that the Scottish Government has supported in order to improve diagnosis is the Scottish referral guidelines for suspected cancer, which were updated in 2014. These include a specific section on pancreatic cancer and are intended to help GPs, the wider primary care team, other clinicians, patients and carers to identify those people who are most likely to have cancer and who therefore require urgent assessment by a specialist including all the telltale signs that Claire Adamson, Marie Todd uh, and others have outlined with a clear instruction in those referral guidelines to have a low threshold for considering uh, further investigation or referral because of the uh, detection uh, difficulties that we know exist with this uh, cancer. But once referral is made, we need to ensure that no one has to wait longer than they should to receive a diagnosis and then if needed treatment of their cancer. And that's why the Cabinet Secretary announced the formation of a new Ministerial Cancer Performance Delivery Group and that group will focus on driving forward improvements in waiting times for diagnosis eh, and treatment for cancer patients in Scotland and is backed by an additional £1 million investment to help address shortfalls and capacity in some areas. This is in addition to the £4.85 million of investment made in 2017 to support improvement in diagnostic scopes and imaging capacity for suspected cancer patients. It's also important, though, that we aim to prevent cancers from occurring uh, in the first place, a point I think that was made by uh, Colin uh, Smith, because we know that smoking and obesity can be uh, contributing factors in developing pancreatic cancer. And as uh, we all know, Scotland has done much over the past years to reduce the harms uh, from uh, preventable uh, uh, public health uh, approaches. So we've taken forward strategic approaches to tackle drinking, smoking, and of course, one that will, will have a an indirect impact on this debate, the newly launched consultation on diet and obesity that we made public uh, last, uh, meet, uh, last week. However, most uh, members recognised uh, the difficulty in diagnosing uh, pancreatic cancer early. The symptoms are often non-specific and can mean that people present very late to their GP. It's therefore important that we have a good understanding of this type of tumour to enable NHS Scotland colleagues to treat it more effectively. And the Scottish Government has made available via the Chief Science Office over 700,000 to support Precision Pank, along with 10 million from Cancer Research UK. 
and this investment will help to improve our understanding of this tumour type, hopefully leading to more effective treatments. And at that point, I would like to uh, uh, welcome the increased focus from Cancer Research UK on those less survivable cancers, such as pancreatic cancer, and hope that this increased research capacity helps to improve outcomes for all those affected by this cancer. I would also like to note that researchers can also apply to the Scottish Government CSO for funding and applications investigating the diagnosis and treatment of pancreatic cancer would be very welcome. In direct response, though, however, to Miles Briggs' point around the fast-track referral uh, and treatment trials that are happening in England, it's important to note that it will be at least two years before the outcomes of this pilot are known. However, there are processes in place via uh, National Services Scotland and our National Cancer Clinical Services Group to ensure that any new emerging evidence from those studies are considered when developing services in uh, Scotland. To close, Presiding Officer, we know, absolutely know, Presiding Officer, that we need to raise awareness for the, about this condition. We also know that we need to continue with the research and we also need to be mindful of the correlation with cancer prevalence and inequalities that are faced by too many of our communities. To make the improvements, we also need to be mindful of the stories of those feeling the pain of pancreatic cancer, whether it's them themselves who have been diagnosed or whether it's been a loved one that has had this diagnosis. We demand better for them and, uh, in the words of Linda Murray, uh, we'll keep on advocating to ensure other people get a fairer chance of survival. So again, Presiding Officer, pay uh, tribute to Claire Adamson for bringing this uh, important uh, debate to the Chamber and also to John Scott though and others who have spoken very powerfully about the impact that this cruel disease can have on the people they know, whether that's constituents or loved ones. And hopefully we can work together in terms of research, building our capacity to make sure that we can bring about the improvements that we need that have been a long time coming. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the debate and I commend all members who took part in the debate for their speeches and I close this meeting of Parliament.